Welcome to Astro Energy with Astrologer Angel Shelley Overton. Tuesday, September 20th, 2016, and the Astro Energy Show. My name is Shelley Overton, and I am here as your astrologer for the next hour, and I will be telling you all about what's going on in the sky, and today we're talking about the asteroid Chiron, so I'm really excited about that. If you would like to get a reading, the number is 347-994-3365, and I am looking forward to talking with you. So it's been a really interesting week and last 24 hours. I have, um, <laughs> yesterday it was pretty rainy out, but um, I was working on finishing up my book, and I might say in the last half hour, I actually finished writing it so I'm very excited and it's going off to the editor now and I'm going to have to pick a date for release but you will absolutely be kept up on when that release happens but this week so um, living here on the farm I have uh, interesting stuff always happening and a couple nights ago I was sitting watching TV and I saw a bunch of lights flashing outside so we always have cops or fire trucks or something happening out here in the country and yesterday was no exception so i was sitting on the couch uh working on my book and i heard this very loud squeal go on about 1 30 yesterday afternoon and i ended up uh i'm sitting there hearing the squeal going okay wait for it because you know the bang is going to happen any second so i live right on a right angle curve in the road and people go too fast and they don't make that turn and so that happened yesterday and as i was sitting there i heard the bang so i opened the door grabbed my phone ran out to the street and there was a white pickup truck that had gone in the ditch right in front of my house in next to the mailbox, which, by the way, was taken out a year ago when uh, someone else hit it, and along with the street sign saying 15-mile-an-hour curve. So I looked out, and there was a white pickup truck, and I ran out with my phone, and I was dialing 911. And I looked inside, and it was just a teenager sitting behind the wheel, and he was looking a little dazed. But right after that, a couple pickup trucks had gotten on the other side of the road to, I guess, help him. And so I ran up and I asked if he was okay. I looked to see what the damage was. And he was in the ditch. He hadn't hit the fence, but he hit the ditch near the fence and took out a whole row of lilies. And so he was probably 16 or 17. And I told the people on the phone that we didn't need an ambulance or anything like that. And then I went back in the house to finish the call and get the state trooper out here. And when I went back, well, the first time, the guy across the street said he was going to tow him out, and they had some straps to try and tow him out. The, when I went out the second time after finishing the call to 911, the guy said that he was going to take the kid because he was underage, or not underage, he was um, without a license. He didn't have a license and that he would get arrested if they had him in the car. So he took him and he said, I need to get an adult. And he took him away. I'm like, okay, I'm going to stay out of that. You know, I'm like, well, that's kind of skanky, but okay. So it turns out that a cop was going by a few times and he did not stop. He went by a few times and didn't stop for this. And my landlady came by in that time and we're both looking at each other like, what the heck? And so Finally, uh, he did stop by and say, do you need any help? And I said, well, this kid, you know, banged into this and took, went off with some other guy. And he didn't see – I said, I called the troopers. They're coming. He's like, okay. So he left. And the trooper got here, and he took the information. I told him what happened. Apparently, after the guy who took the kid left, another guy was there who was a bail bondsman. He had been chasing, apparently, two girls who had skipped bail. This kid may have been involved. He was wondering if the... <clears throat> so congested. 
<clears throat> I'm so sorry. I think I cleared my throat on air. Um, anyway, I'm trying not to do that to you. But um, the cat has been in and out of this house with the electrical storms going on recently. And I'm very allergic. So I apologize if I did that to you. Um, so anyway, this energy is just really creating all of the things that you're seeing with um, emergency energy and expression of this heightened um, mental energy of the awareness. So it can it can cause accidents, but can also create major shifts and changes. And I was just sitting here before the show, and um, I get notifications of what's going on, and I saw Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt are getting a divorce. So it is also the energy with Venus opposing Uranus um, within, actually, over the course of the last 24 hours, 24 to 36 hours, direct opposition to Uranus. So that is, I mean, not surprising. It's been expected that major relationships are having a shift and a change. So currently, uh, astrologically, we've got Uranus at 23 retrograde in Aries, opposing a 26 degree Venus in Libra. We have the moon at 20 Taurus, North Node at 12 Virgo retrograde, Mercury at 15 Virgo retrograde, Sun at 28 degrees, uh, Virgo, uh, not retrograde because it's the sun, so it's direct. Jupiter at 2 degrees Libra, Venus at 26 Libra, Saturn at 10 Sagittarius, Mars at 25 Sagittarius. So he, of course, is squaring the sun. He is in square soon to Mercury as he moves forward in about a week. He'll square Mercury. We've got uh, Pluto at 14 degrees Capricorn retrograde. He, again, is trining the moon and trining Mercury. And then we have uh, Neptune in Pisces at 8 degrees, conjunct the south node in Pisces at 12 degrees. So a lot of energy going around the grand trine in Earth. We've got a square between Saturn and Neptune, exact 10 degrees still. We have sextiles going on between um, the Mercury and, wait a minute, I'm trying to read this here. Oh, no, I'm sorry, Venus and uh, Mars. So Venus and Mars are actually working in tandem now. Yay, they're not squaring anymore. So we're actually getting things to move forward. But again, that kind of works along with uh, the energy about relationships and changing mentality and shifting and um I think I mentioned something to you about my son having a relationship when he started school and they broke up with the Mercury retrograde and now they're back together with the Mercury getting ready to go direct. So, um, you know, it's just a major time of shifts and change. And actually, um, astrologically with the relationships, it's a very strong energy of uh, committing to the next phase. So that means either ending or beginning something new. So, Let's see what else we have going on. In conjunct between the sun and Uranus. It's a wide in conjunct and the sun is past. So it's a separating in conjunct. So that really was probably more of the explosions this weekend in New York City. You know, the Uranus energy rules, you know, explosions and um, unexpected things as well. Aries is the emergency energy. So uh, emergency vehicles and workers. And Uranus is uranium and explosions and I know last week there was an explosion in North Korea and that was also part of that same uranium energy okay so let me see is there anything oh yeah I want to go over what's going on what happened to my glasses you know every week I'm always saying where are my glasses there they are and um, I'm going to get my eyes checked so I can have glasses on my face all the time and not have to look for them all the time so this week, we have a lot going on. We have Mercury trining Pluto today. We have Mercury going direct tomorrow and into Thursday. So it's overnight. We have the sun going into Libra. We have, and that is uh, Thursday. We have uh, moon entering Cancer Friday, which isn't in and of itself anything uh, intense. It happens every month. Mercury trining Pluto also. So what happens is Mercury is retrograde trining Pluto. Then Mercury goes direct and trines Pluto again. So it kind of hovers right around that degree. 
So it's at 15, Pluto's at 14, it trines it, and then it goes direct, and then it comes back and trines it again. So two direct trines within a few days. And then um, the other one that I wanted to mention is Pluto going direct next Monday, which is the day before my show next week. So that's a very big day. Um, this weekend is going to be another rocking and actually the whole week with the trine going on with uh, Mercury and then Mercury going direct and Pluto going direct. It's a lot. So we're going to be seeing a lot of new stories around, um, again, like life changes, uh, structural change can be earthquake because it's the earth sign. Um, moon is getting out of that sign. So the moon will be moving on. So we won't have anything to round out the grand trine, thankfully, um, unless you look at asteroids. I don't have asteroids up on this chart. And then, let's see, okay, so I think that pretty much covers it. So, whew, wow, and then there's an inconjunct between the moon and Neptune, also on the same day as Pluto uh, moving direct. But I'll talk about, I'll probably talk about Pluto going direct next week. Um, I'll probably contribute some of it next week, and then we're probably going to do another asteroid next week. I'm thinking about Juno. Anyway, so let's talk about Chiron. Chiron, Chiron, Chiron. So Chiron, interestingly, is the sign of the centaur. And the way I usually read Chiron is he's the wounded healer, which means that wherever Chiron falls in your chart, it is the area where you have had the most difficult time in your life, um, either emotionally, physically, intellectually, mentally, any area of your life that has been really kind of a deep wounding that never really goes away. And I can tell you in my chart, it falls into my house of romance, creativity, and children. And so I, I don't know if per se that that is just one thing in my life, but definitely my artistic career has a strong energy around the Chiron about the wounding of not really getting supported in my family for that particular part of my career. And um, children, definitely, because I find uh, my son, you know, he's an Aquarius, so he just detaches. And that really is a difficult energy for the Leo, which is, it's in the Leo house for me. So, um, you know, wherever Chiron falls, that's where you have a deep wounding in your life. And it's where you may never get over it. Um, it may never be rectified, say, with the person who may do it to you. But it's really the area where you grow to understand and become sympathetic to others who have gone through a similar thing. So that's how I usually read uh, Chiron. Looking up and researching Chiron as an asteroid and, of course, the mythology and archetype that goes along with it, it's a lot more, of course, which they all are. You know, you get certain catchphrases when you are exposed to things over the years. And, um, you know, that pretty much, you know, it concentrates the archetype so that you can utilize the information. But when you research it, it's just so much more fleshed out and wonderful. But it's a, so Chiron, mythologically, was actually – part man, part horse, so he is a centaur. But he's different from other centaurs in that most centaurs are half man, half horse, are lower half horse and upper half man. But he was elevated to a higher level. He, had, he was considered to have had superior knowledge. He was a teacher, and his front legs were human, not horse. So that makes him unique in his genre. And he was more civilized. So the the classic archetype of a centaur in mythology is that they are rather, <laughs> this is my word now, debaucherous. Um, they were drinkers and they would be very lusty and they were, they would just kind of do a lot of kind of not, I don't know, I guess moral. They weren't as moral as um, you would expect well, actually, you wouldn't expect, but he was. He was more of a, a non-drinker. He avoided being overcome by lust, according to the research, and he had superior knowledge. He lived at Mount Pelion, and um, I, can't, I don't think I put down who his parents were, but um, he was born to be uh, 
like a demigod, but he went in between. Uh, he had a human life, but he was immortal. And so what he did was he was a teacher, and he got married to a nymph named, and I don't know if I can get this right, Shari... Sh- uh, Chiriclo, Chiriclo, I think, and she was considered, well, he didn't get married. He, she was considered his consort, and he had three daughters, Hippie, Endis, and, uh, yeah, and Endis, and Osiro, or Osiroi, and not just to let you know how these, <laughs> these are written, O-C-Y-R-H-O-E, so it's not necessarily something easy to pronounce, because I didn't take mythology in college, um, so anyway, he had students, and some of his students were Achilles, Jason, Her- Heracles, and Phoenix. He was a centaur that was more evolved because he was not a drinker and he wasn't as lustful. He was more into education and teaching people or teaching others. Um, so the legend has it that he was having wine, even though he did he wasn't a drinker, but he was, I guess, having a social time in, in a cave, which is where he lived, with Heracles and Pholus, P-H-O-L-U-S, and um, other centaurs. So what happened was, um, I think Heracles brought over wine to have, and he opened it, and because the centaurs have a heightened sense of smell and are very much into drinking and everything that they do, they smelled the wine and came and attacked them trying to get to the wine. So Heracles ended up opening the bottle, uh, and when he did so, that well actually that was why they came and then he took some arrows and put poison on them and shot them at these centaurs to get rid of them but one of the arrows actually hit Chiron and because he was immortal he couldn't die but he was in tremendous pain and he tried to use herbs to ease the pain but it wouldn't work so eventually there was kind of another side story where um, it involved Prometheus. And I don't know if you're familiar with Prometheus. He was supposed to have brought fire to humanity. And because he brought fire to humanity, it was considered a transgression, and he was not looked well upon because he stole fire. And, um, and so in order to help Prometheus, uh, who was, I believe, being punished, he was being um, detained and and held in shackles, I believe, that he they ended up making a deal with the gods where Chiron went back to become to the uh, sky and became immortal or actually a god. He got to go to the house of the gods at Mount Olympus or be with the gods at Mount Olympus. And he was honored with, quote, a place in the sky, unquote, as, a const- as the constellation Centaurus. So he was in basically in charge of the healing arts. He was a teacher. He was skilled with medicine. He was a great astrologer and a respected oracle. He was a tutor. He taught, um, he taught chants to Dionysus and dances and said that he did a back chick, right? There were back chicks, right? B A C C H I C rights that he taught and initiations. He knew archery, hunting, he was uh, he was good at prophecy and music, and in my view, he was very similar to uh, the archetype of Sagittarius. And so, I mean, in my mind, this is everything Sagittarius kind of embodies, with the exception of travel. And so, um, but he is in charge of being the wounded healer. So that really is the key thing because of what happened to him. And so he kind of oversees that energy. And then also, interestingly, in the course of my research, I found that they named a brand new car that is coming out at the end of 2016, the Bugatti Chiron. And let me tell you, I looked at this car. This is an amazing looking car. And it is going to be for sale, according to what they say, for 1.9 million pounds or $2.66 million. So if you get a chance to look it up, it's a pretty amazing looking vehicle. And uh, it goes up to, it has a 1,000 horsepower engine, I believe they said, and it goes up to 250 miles an hour. So that being said, I guess that adds the archetype of travel back into Chiron. So I'm not really sure why um, Sagittarius is not just married with Chiron, but 
they are two separate entities, and one's an asteroid, and then of course Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter, the planet. So um, anyway, if you are looking into Chiron and charts, just know that all of that archetypal energy goes along with it. So it can also mean when you see Chiron in the chart that it can be the place where um, you are a teacher, and that is also uh, married to it and something that uh, as you, and I, some, I guess what I'm trying to say is something that I've always assigned to Chiron anyway, because you get wounded, but then you are able to teach from a, a compassionate standpoint. And from everything I've read about Chiron, he was very much um, a loving individual and very kind. So it is the place of kindness in your chart as well, because you have experienced that wounding. So that is Chiron. And I think I'm going to take my break early because we have a lot of people waiting for a reading. And I would love to get to you if you want to call in. It's 347-994-3365. And I'll be back here in just a second. As soon as I find my break music, where the heck are you? Um, There we are. Okay. In these days of stress, running around, responsibilities, we all need a little place to go to to make it all better. Is that place sports? Football? Or maybe you like to garden, paint, or just listen to music. Wherever your happy place is, you can find a shirt or mug to reflect that happy place. At myhappyplace.rocks, we have a variety of lifestyle products, including iPhone cases, pajamas, and pet items, all with beautiful, colorful designs, which help us go to our happy place. Stop by on the web for great gift ideas for others and yourself. MyHappyPlace.rocks Lenny Pickett appears courtesy of Random Act Records. Check him out at RandomActRecords.com And welcome back. This is Astro Energy Astrology with Shelley Overton. And I want to say thank you for stopping by and listening and getting a reading. So we're going to go to the phone lines and take 818. Hi, 818. How are you? Are you there? Take it off mute. I'm so sorry. It's Diane. Hi, Shell. <laughs> Hi, Diane. <You're> <laughs> I agree. What's I love your story. You always teach me something, and I'm so happy to awesome. relate because it, it resonates with what you said. I just love it. Cool. So on my chart, could we be lying in like your um, child getting back in with their – is there someone from my past that I might reconnect with with my question? Um, well, definitely with Neptune Retrograde, there's strong uh, past – energy are you looking for someone or did somebody come in well there's someone he uh, he sent me by accident within the last day a text message Uh but it was it didn't make any sense you know it's one of those by accident and i didn't respond and he never corrected it if he realized it and and it made me think of him but maybe it was just i don't know it made me think of him is what i wanted to say well, the Mercury retrograde definitely has, and it's for you, it's in your house of, well, what I consider to be the initiation of love relationships, which is the second house. And so, yeah, there is some energy there in this north node. Um, I, I don't necessarily see that as a culmination. Um, you have Neptune and Pisces in your house of commitment, and that's retrograde. Um yeah, I mean, there. It's a community. I would say it's probably more just a communication glitch. You know, you've got the Mercury retrograde, but I would wait to see what happens in a couple of days when Mercury goes direct and goes back over that same point, because you might end up hearing from him again. <laughs> and if that happens, then that's going to be more likely something that's serious, because um, Venus is right near your Saturn. And it's going into the Scorpio energy, and Neptune is in the Scorpio energy right now. So I would say if he if you hear from him again in the next couple of days, then take it more seriously. Okay. Well, that's very positive. Yes, thank you, doll. I yeah. really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, you're that's welcome. Perfect. Awesome. Bye, Shell. Okay. Bye. Take care. <laughs> okay. Let's take six five one. Hi, six five one. How are you? 
Good. This is Linda. Hi, Linda. Let me see if I, I can I'm so find happy you. to connect with you again. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, you too. So, I'd like, so two things on my mind. Um, one, I'm wondering if you can check the chart around the new moon. I want to do a free healing call to put okay. out to you know various memberships, and I'm wondering what would be a good day for that. Okay. Well, um, so tell me what is what do you, uh, healing call meaning? You're going to do some Reiki, or what? What are um, you going to be doing? Reiki is involved. Generally, the the process that I take people to is I do some breath play, breath play, to bring them mm-hmm. into a um, a very relaxed state. And essentially, what I do is I bring people to the energy still point. Mm-hmm. I would and, say, and then re, and then reset that energy. So so it's an so I'm doing an energy still point mm-hmm. reset with them. Okay, well, I, early, early in the morning, like at 8, is probably not good. So on the right. Friday the 30th, yeah, you probably so you probably know it, but moon enters Libra at 3.52 a.m. Eastern and 12.52 a.m. Pacific. And then right after at 8 a.m., it squares Mars. So obviously that's going to be a more difficult aspect. But right after that, at 12.54 p.m. Eastern, he can, or the moon conjuncts Jupiter which is really good. So, and then right after that, he conjuncts the sun too. So between about, well, I guess any time after 8 a.m., you know, after the square, but I would get a little farther away from 8 a.m. You know, I would wait till the moon got maybe um, an hour after that. So it really leaves that energy field. And then um, and from then until... There's an inconjunct with Neptune that night at 11.26, and I would avoid the inconjunct as well. So that whole day up until about, I would say, maybe 10 o'clock at night should be good. On Saturday? On Friday. On Friday? Yeah, Friday. Oh, so any time on Friday up until well, be, 10 Yeah, like PM. between, um, I would say between 9 and nine and 10, 9 a.m. and 10 p.m. Okay, and you. what does... Um, like Tuesday or Wednesday look like the, after the new moon. Okay, after the new moon, Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, let's see. Right in the middle of the day is not too good because the moon's in Scorpio. It's in conjunct Uranus, and there are good aspects up until then. So I would say until about one o'clock, or even right up until about yeah, about one o'clock, because at twelve fifty nine the moon in Libra sextile Saturn and Sagittarius. So that's good. And um, the moon also trines Chiron that day around noon. So all of the and morning. That's on Tuesday? And Tuesday? Yeah, on Tuesday. Okay. And then uh, Wednesday, the moon is in Sagittarius and sextiles Jupiter, its ruler, at 4. And then it sextiles Pluto at 520. And then he squares at 545. He squares Jupiter. So I would say uh, Wednesday's fine up until about just after five, about 530. Eastern. Uh, yes, Eastern. My time. Okay. Yeah. And then, <clears throat> where was Chiron in my birth chart? That really got in me fascinated. Your chart in Capricorn, and you, by the way, have Pluto right on your Chiron right now, which is major life change. So, so that's uh, a major change around that wounding. Have you been doing? And it's in your twelfth house. So you have fifteen degree Chiron at uh, Capricorn. So it's about the structure. It's about structure of education and psychic ability. Um, Twelfth house is putting structure to your psychic ability. And then Pluto's major life change around that. Now, of course, Pluto's retrograde this week. He goes direct on Monday. So that's going to be even better for you. I would, uh, well, you, the 26th, I think, was the new moon. Didn't we say 26th was the new moon? So he'll be that's direct. If, I'm, let me look. Oh, you're right. It was the 30th. See, I close it, and then my mind is on to the next thing. I know. So, yeah, but Pluto will be direct in time for the new moon because Pluto goes direct on the 26th, and the new moon's on the 30th. Um, oh, the Mars retrograde's the 30th. Hang on. I'm going to look it up again because I just put it away, but i got to find it. Um, where the heck did it go? Lunar eclipse. So I know it's coming up at the end of the month. There it is. Um, no, wait a minute. Okay, now I've got to back up a second. I'm in the wrong area. I'm sorry. I'm in. Okay, there it is. Yeah, it is the 30th. So, yeah, by four days, Pluto will be direct. 
so and that's um, a good thing. So the one, yes. the twelfth house is Capricorn, and what's the mm-hmm. significance of that? That's around structure and. Yeah, Capricorn is like your authority and your ability to be a responsible. Per- <laughs> can't get it out responsible person it's your connectedness oh. to the elder generation and really ancestry so and in okay. that house like your so your 12th house not only brings in the pisces energy which i've said many times that pisces is the story of your past um capricorn is your ancestors and then pisces is like ge- genealogy so you have a really strong connection in your chart to your ancestors and genealogy and the psychic uh intuition bringing it in and making it manifest through the lineage and um being that chiron's in capricorn in that house it means that there was a really strong connection to an elderly person that there was some that was where the wounding was with this older person in your life. And it was either you couldn't get closer to the person or you were very connected and they left you or something along those lines. So the, could that be like father? Or does oh, yeah. Be father older? is Capricorn. Yeah, father is a Capricorn energy of the Zodiac. So definitely it relates to paternalism. <clears throat> yeah, that makes sense. Because I think when, when I was a little, little girl, um, I – seem to remember some extreme closeness to my father and the pictures certainly indicate that and then something changed and maybe yeah. he, that's went into his alcoholism oh yeah and pisces rules alcoholism and addiction and escapism oh that's so he yeah. was escaping he yeah, was and physically present but not emotionally available well, what Pluto on that point also means, because Pluto rules the Scorpio energy, which is the therapist and the psychologist, is right. understanding the psychology of what went on. So, you know, in this, and I got chills with this, that Pluto yeah. is hitting your Chiron as a way of giving you a broader view of the dynamic that went on with where you were wounded. And it's, you know, it's the house of the hidden. So there may be a wounding that you didn't even recognize throughout your life. You know, like at 15, no, right around your teenage years. There's some kind there of energy strong. around that that I don't know. Mm-hmm. That, well, that maybe something happened that I'm not aware of. And you're working on that. And I can tell you about the time Pluto hits Aquarius, that energy will get much clearer for you. You know, like because okay. Pluto rules the hidden and it's in the house of the hidden from the self, it's the subconscious. So Pluto is starting to really churn up some paternalistic issues that's what it rules it's you know why do you behave the way you do what is the connection to the lineage and the dynamic that you had with your father or with a father figure or an authority figure so and it can even be a woman but it's the authority figure and then uh, when pluto hits aquarius in your chart it comes out into your first house which means you're kind of like born that's where it was like that energy two degrees aquarius is You being born, that happened on the day you were born. That's where that was. So what happens is Pluto goes into the Aquarian energy, and it expresses through like a rebirth. So you can look for that right around 2023. In that, like between 2020 and 2023 is a humongous time of shift and change for the world. And in individual charts, I'm seeing a lot of different connections with people to major shifts coming for them in their charts. And you definitely have it. It's like coming into your own work mentality and giving yourself permission to express some of the subconscious things, subliminal things that have been in your chart that are more more um, structured and labeled because you have a lot of Libra energy in your chart. And that means um, you're, you kind of come and go with the flow and you don't always have the strength to make the decisions. Yeah. Um, So, yeah, it's like that you see all sides of something. Well, Capricorn says, oh, that's all well and good, but this is where I'm going. And Pluto says this is the way it is. Pluto is the decisive planet. And in Capricorn, it's very decisive and labeling. And that energy, that's what you're working with right now. You're working to understand that, that categorizing and organizing and structuring your thoughts and your abilities. That's what Pluto is trying to have you do. Okay. Right now, yeah. yeah. For the Very next, um, what, like, um, like eight years? It's going through that house for about eight more years. 
Okay, and and so now I'm reviewing my Seven. dynamics in my male relationships primarily, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. and this year okay. with Jupiter and Libra is going to hit your Sun, your Neptune, your Mercury, and your Saturn, and also shift from the house of commitment to the house of travel and adventure and expression and opening to a larger story. So with others, with relationships, and partners, to so, open up. Yeah, you're actually going to be a lot more. Um, like I want to say airy, and because it is an air sign, you're going to be much more happy in your mindset and your mentality yeah. coming, and, and especially after Jupiter gets to 19 degrees, because while it's still in Libra and it's an air sign, when it gets into the ninth house ruled by uh, Jupiter and that happier energy, that's going to lighten you up, and you'll get out of the Scorpio energy, which right now Jupiter's in your Scorpio house. So that comes, let's see, at 19 degrees, which is... In, in December, right before Christmas. Just okay. in time for Christmas, so it'll be awesome. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, darling. You're welcome. My pleasure. Good talking to you. Good talking to you, too. Okay, Bless take you. care. Thanks. Bye. Okay, let's move on to 913. Hi, 913. How are you? Hi, Shelly. Andy, how are you doing? I'm doing great. What's going on? I have, first, have you called before, and I apologize if you haven't. I don't recognize you. Oh, no, that's okay. I have, um, but I'm uh, March 24th, 1965. Okay. Yeah, in Urbana, Illinois, Urbana, yep. Illinois, right? Okay, yep, I've got that's you. me. So what can I do for you today? Um, got a quick question. I'm looking at trying to schedule a big meeting um, for um, defending a research proposal, and okay. it's probably going to be either November or December, um, mm-hmm. like the first half of December or probably the second half of November. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. So I just sure. wondered which one looked better. Um, let me look real quick. It's going to be fine after the 20th. Neptune goes direct. Neptune is in your house. Okay, so you're defending a research paper, which research is under the eighth house rulership which is Scorpio energy. But Neptune right now is literally one degree away from leaving that house for you. But that Uh being said, he's also directly on top of your Saturn, which is everything you're doing. That's completely signifying what you're telling me you're going to do. So Saturn is the structure. (laughs) Um, Neptune is the idea of something, and it's uh, the research paper in the eighth house defending a research paper. And so Neptune is retrograde until the 20th. He goes direct. And then let me see when he, if he gets into, he's going to be actually going a little farther back to nine degrees. And so I think as long as he's moving forward, you should be fine. So after the 20th of November, um, let me see what else is going on astrologically. And I know, let's see, do we have, yeah, we have another Mercury retrograde the second, the last two weeks of December. And that's in the sign of Capricorn, which is the Saturn house. So I would honestly say if you can do it between the 20th of November and the 18th of December, that would be best. I would uh, I would try and avoid going close to the 18th because that's when uh, Mercury retrogrades and that's thought processes in Capricorn, which is the structure. You don't want that. So um, right. let me. See. I got to look up in another ephemeris. Let me find my other ephemeris and see how late. He gets yeah, so Mercury definitely. goes to 28 degrees of Sag, and he goes all the way to zero. And then, okay. And so I'm just trying to see because you want to make sure that if you're defending it, you don't have to defend it again. So right. 12. That means, hang on, 20. I'm just trying to see where. Okay, so if you could do it the last two weeks of November, that would probably be optimal. Okay. You can Excellent. you can still do it in December, but you know um, you're going to enter the Mercury retrograde shadow period, so right. That's always you know something to be aware of. But let me see where that falls in your chart. It falls in your house of creativity, and that's where transiting Saturn is. So yeah, actually um, work to zero. Okay, so it's going to be um, two houses. It'll be your work house and a little bit of your um, creativity house. So. Just do it the last two weeks of November. That's the best answer for you. All <laughs> right. Excellent. Thank you okay, so great. much. You're welcome. My pleasure. Good talking to you. Bye bye. You too. Bye bye. Okay. Let's see. Eight one five. Hi. Eight one five. How are you? Hi. How are you? 
I'm good, thanks. What's up? Who is this first? Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, my name is Dewana. I've called before. Okay, February 15th? Feb- Feb- yep, that's me. Okay, what can I do for you? I called because I have some trines, the Jupiter trine and the Venus trine, Jupiter trine um, mm-hmm. and the Venus trine. Um, Neptune? To my, um, yeah. And also, I have a lot of planets in Pisces that are going to be trying it, my Venus. You or do. Or the transit yes. Venus will be trying it. Yep. That's actually um, a little ways away because Neptune is such a slow mover. Um, he only goes I was like focusing more on the planets in my natal planets in Pisces that will be uh, Right, but your, your, Venus. Uh, Venus, your Venus is at 19 degrees. And so mm-hmm. you won't even feel that until 2020 with Neptune. I mean, I shouldn't say that. You will feel it because Neptune's in the same house, but it won't be triggering that specific storyline until a little bit later. Um, you're probably waking up to some energy around um, taking charge of your innate ability for a psychic phenomenon and um, intuition and all that. Is that what you're, you've been working on recently since Neptune's been in Pisces? I have like, been studying astrology a lot. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, you have Sun in the, Aquarius and Aquarius past, ruling your midheaven, which is astrology. Yeah. For the past okay. uh, three years, I've been studying. Awesome. Yeah, well, Jupiter was right on your uh, Uranus uh, recently. Just before he went into net, into uh, Libra, he was right mm-hmm. on Uranus, which, again, Uranus rules astrology. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I guess I'm not really sure if you have a specific question. You're just wanting to know what to expect out of all that, or I, I'm specifically I was wondering more about my, the Venus, the transit Venus trining, the transit Venus in Scorpio. Oh, okay, transit. my Venus. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> No, 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 that's fine. Um, That's going to be a really powerful energy for you because, um, well, first off, Venus is going to hit your Mars, and it's at the end degrees of the house of romance. So if you're not in a relationship, Mm -hmm. I think as soon as Venus gets into Scorpio, you have opportunities for romance in the work environment or, you know, again, everything Virgo is, healing, education, work. Um, Yeah, because that's where the Scorpio is for you. So Venus is going to hit your Mars at the last degree of your ha- of your house of home. Or excuse me. Hold on one second. I'm sorry. I've got to clear my throat. I'm going to mute. Okay. Sorry. Um, so Venus conjunct Mars is going to create that drive towards the commitment, towards your creative self. And if you've been uh, possibly having a romance, it's going to really accelerate whatever connection you have to someone or bring in someone. There's going to be an increased um, sexual attractiveness that you'll have and that you'll also be aware of because Venus is desire, so your desire will be in alignment with your sex drive and your your feminine and masculine energy will be – well, your masculine energy will be heightened because Venus will – shine a light on it and then when venus gets to 19 degrees of scorpio you'll have the trine with your natal venus and that will actually trigger energy around your workplace and your career so um let me look up when that falls and that will be in scorpio i'm flipping my pages to my book so fast between calls (laughs) so yeah (laughs) venus at 19 is the 10th of october actually Oh, okay. So, yeah, and that's really good, though, because the sun's in Libra at that time. And the sun in Libra, let me see, it'll be moving into a trine with your natal sun in Aquarius. And so, and it's also in the sign of Libra, which is where Jupiter is. And towards the end of the year, Jupiter's going to get really close to the um, end degrees of the sign. He'll get to 20 degrees Libra, which is also, um, you know, that energy of that same degree. That could be a little bit difficult if you are seeing someone at that point because Libra is in conjunct to your natal Venus at 20 degrees. It's literally only one degree off of an in conjunct, which could be a stress aspect towards the end of December if you're getting in a relationship, which there's a lot of positive energy around getting in a relationship. And there's also, do you do any kind of therapy or, you know, like uh, psychology type stuff in your career? Um, I'm HR director, so indirectly I do. <laughs> indirectly? 
Well, there. Okay, so <laughs> yeah, I, there I, is. I have to. I, I deal with a lot of issues with other people okay. at work. So. Okay. Well, Neptune and Scorpio is the psychologist, and it's in the house of work, which is medicine, also. And so there's a really strong uh, connection between the ability to problem solve and be of service to people. So you combine those in okay. your work environment. And it's a past life thing. You have South Node and Scorpio at nine in your house of work and health. So you kind of brought in from your past life that ability to really connect to people and cut to the heart of the matter. No, like in an instant, oh, I, I know what this is. And, I, and give them what they need. And you're good. And you're usually right. Not only is Scorpio mm-hmm. a, kind of a righteous energy, but so is Virgo. So the combination of Virgo and Scorpio in your chart is like you're kind of infallible in a lot of ways, you know. And Neptune's direct okay, as guess, well. So Okay. I think that does fit with my job. Say that again? I said I guess what you said fits with my job. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then you have Neptune yeah, transiting have your to. career house too. So um it's it's gonna get stronger. You know, as Neptune gets to your let's see, right now he's not exactly on any planets he's four degrees off of your mercury so you're gonna i mean that's like telepathic communication and in in a career so it's really going to strongly bring in the energy of using your intuition in your career and you know i mean i don't even know how else to say it like you're just really lit up to intuit what other people are about and make a career out of it Hmm. Okay. So, I mean, again, okay. if you want to be more pragmatic and practical, you have a, an eye for photography and, and and film. Those are the two areas that it rules. And also, I mentioned again genealogy because um, there's a story, a, a story of the past. And so, you like to translate that for what it is, like the Mercury and Pisces in the Capricorn house could mean that you help elderly people tell their story, and you might okay. find have, a way to get that to happen. Okay, I've done a lot of genealogy research, not in recent years, but okay. about 10 years ago, I did do a lot of genealogy research Okay, well, on my, um, on my family. Yeah. This, well, and you could actually, interestingly enough, people do pay for genealogists. They may want to know mm-hmm. their history, but don't want to actually do all the groundwork. So yeah. that, that could actually be, and you have Saturn in um, Pisces, and it's in the house mm-hmm. of Aquarius, so that's money from career. It's near Chiron, so your Chiron is in your 11th house. So that's your soul group, and you're somewhat disconnected from the people that can actually really support you somehow in mm-hmm. in your um, life story. But your Saturn, when Neptune hits your Saturn, which, of course, it's going to be a ways off, it's 28, 28 degrees. But what mm-hmm. Neptune does to Saturn, so that's 2025. It's like, okay. you know, what What are we in, 26? So like nine years away. But when Neptune, probably you'll feel it pretty strongly when Neptune gets to 22 because it's only a few degrees off and it's it's just really in a new house and triggering, which is, let's see, 2023, January of 2023. That's really hard to say. <laughs> 223, 2023. <laughs> I don't know how to say it, but anyway, in 23, um, that's going to be a new story for you. You're going to shift and change your career so you know we're going into 2017 so that's five years away five five and a half mm-hmm. so you'll be okay, feeling I'd it then probably i'm thinking about retiring in six years and so. and that aligns yeah it aligns it'll okay. be when neptune moves out of your house of career but you will be doing okay. a new career i can tell you that because neptune will be on your chiron which opens up a new career path okay I'm thinking, and i am thinking about astrology design. as another career you could do it yeah, anybody That's in our generation, the, the Pluto, the Pluto um, Uranus conjunction in our charts of, of our, mm-hmm. you know, the early to mid sixties, that mm-hmm. energy is completely around. And then with Saturn in Pisces and Sun in Aquarius, you also have that added um, intuitive side. Like you could do what I do, intuitive astrology, where you pick up mm-hmm. energy from people and you interpret. Um, like I use the chills, and sometimes I just I have information that I have in my brain and it's like, well, I'm getting this energy, you know, I'll just say, well, I'm getting a bike. I'm seeing a bike for whatever reason. So it's like that, you know, you just 
bring it in and interpret it um, as it comes to you. And so you'd be really good at that. Okay. And you're a natural therapist okay. and, and psychologist. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. So if that's what you want to do, cool. Okay. Thank you so much. Is that all? You're welcome. Yes, My pleasure. Thank you. thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Bye. Okay. Let's see. We've got one more caller. 404. Hi, 404. How are you? Hey, Sally. How are you? I'm good. I am talking to... It's uh, Lolita. Okay. Wonderful. How are you today? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. How are you? I'm fine. So good. what, what I was can gonna, I do for you? I was wondering what aspect do you see this affecting me in my chart using the, Chiron, the, the Chiron energy? Okay, so you have Chiron at 12 degrees Aries in your 12th house. And double check, you're December 30th, right? Yeah. Okay, so again, you know, you've got it in the 12th house. So your wounding is subconscious, but it's around your um, ability to express yourself for who you really are and your internal drive to express your sense of self. So are you able to, like, because it's also in- intuition. So it's following your path that you know is true and taking action on it as it relates to your sense of self and validation of yourself. Does that make sense to you? Okay. Yeah. You recently had Uranus transit over it. So what Uranus did, again, because Uranus is highly aware of um, a lot, like it just in channels information from all, all directions. Uranus said, are you getting this? Are you aware of this? Are you paying attention? Because you need to start realizing and w- awakening to the idea of your own inner need to express that Aries energy, which can, again, Aries is the salesperson, Aries is the policeman or the fire or police person, fire worker, you know, any, anyone who does emergency work. Um, that's, that's part of who you are. Okay. So um, it can also be uh, working in a physical manner, you know, doing construction or constructing things, building things, anything that is like kind of a male-oriented energy. Um, and it's also expressing your intuition through the body, through um, taking action on the environment. So I'm trying to think of a like a way of giving that to you that kind of makes it more understandable. Maybe you can tell me, do you, are you a physical person? You have a lot of Sagittarius. I would assume you are. Uh, yes, I am. Mm-hmm. Okay. So what I see is like, there's a masculine side to you that you may not have expressed much or may have attempted to, but uh-huh. didn't um, acknowledge or wasn't acknowledged or looked positively on by people in your life and maybe even in grade school you had um, a teacher or even a mother figure um, not really support you in behaving a certain way so and I I can tell you right now with Saturn in a fire energy at 10 degrees it's exactly trining within well within two degrees but it'll be very close over the next month trining your Chiron And so Saturn is also coming up on your Venus, and that's desire nature. So in in the eighth house, it's like, no, you really need to recognize that this is something that you have a great passion for, taking action. I've got chills for that. So, you know, your desires are going to be in alignment with this energy. And, excuse me, and so you're going to really want to take some kind of action. And, And there's even some opportunity for you to earn money, uh, with a partner or committing with someone else through that. Okay. And then you've, you've also got some strong partnership energy coming in anyway, you know, traveling with a love interest or um, doing something adventurous and, you know, all that Sagittarius energy is coming out in your eighth house with Saturn on your Venus, Mars is on your um, Mercury. So, and he's about to go into the next house. So you're having some opportunities for travel because not only is Saturn and Mars in Sagittarius in your eighth house of commitment and romance or, you know, that not not romance, but um, relatedness to other people and deeply passionately connecting, but 
Mars is going into the house that is naturally Sagittarius's house. So you have okay. not just like it's an extended period of time where you're really getting to manifest the energy around another person and do the adventure, do the travel, make it happen, and then learn. And you're in a huge growth cycle. You've got Pluto coming up on your Jupiter, which rules that house, and it's major change around something, transition, and then going into okay. your house of career right after it. So huge mm-hmm. changes in the next couple of years for you. And I think that you are expanding. You're becoming a teacher in a lot of ways as well, if you're not already. Yeah. Yeah, okay. you're right. I'm, I am already, but yeah, you're right. <laughs> Good. So, Absolutely do you have right. any other, That's awesome. anything else you like me to no, look at? Actually, no. Um, okay. Well, actually, can you just confirm when September 27th to the 30th is that where my Jupiter I think hits Pluto, where financial stuff comes in through? Because I know okay. that a lot okay. of in here. Tell me what day? Uh, what dates again? September 27th to the 30th, something around that dose date. The 16, um, Pluto at 16, is that what you were saying, Pluto? Or yeah, Jupiter? I think my, my Jupiter's in Pluto. Oh, no. Um, no, your Jupiter, oh, your Jupiter-Pluto conjunction, yes. Yeah, yeah, and the transit of Jupiter into your house of uh, work and health happens at that time. Okay. Yeah. All um, right. Awesome. Yeah, so that's. So, yeah, definitely you've got you're already on a conjunction between Pluto and and Jupiter. So, but definitely there will be some shifts uh, probably this week actually. Look for some opportunities at work this week for partnering, okay? Okay, perfect. Um that's awesome. Well, can I ask you something on a on a whole different level about the United sure. States? Do you see uh-huh. a structure going reshifting within the United States oh, globally? Yeah. The- oh, yeah. Yeah, that's okay. why I've been talking about that for two years, that um, Pluto moving yeah. into Aquarius, we're going to a Pluto return for the country, which happens around between 2020 and 2023. Pluto is going to be in conjunction with the natal Pluto for our country. And that means, you know, think about when our country was founded, we went through that, like, no, we're going to go off on our own. That's like the birth. And so now we're going through the teenage years, and we will be seeing that shift for the um, – the structure of the country, what our government is like, it's shifting. It is going to shift because we're teenagers. We're, we're rebelling. So we're rebelling right. against the structure that um, we knew when we came in. Like if you think when you're first born, you, you can't do anything for yourself. So our country right. was in infancy. It was trying to figure out who it was. It didn't know what it was. Now with Pluto returning, it's like it's the return of the psychology of the country. It's going to shift and change the structure. It's, it's a given because Pluto makes change, and we're going into the Pluto return. Right after that, because we had the Pluto at the end degrees of Capricorn, it's the structure of the country, and then it went into Aquarius right after, which is humanitarianism and the collective. Yeah. So that makes we sense. changed the structure so from October. our paternalistic thing into that uh-huh. um, October of this year. Yeah. Um, let me see. Cause I know we're going through the whole change government wise and all that. Yeah. But oh, I'm through. sorry. Yeah, like as we go into the election. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Pluto will be coming. Well, Pluto's only going to be at um, the teens. It'll he'll be in 15 degrees and 16 degrees through the end of the year. So I mean, he's just going to go direct. But um, really, the the strong like major world shift, major country shift is going to happen uh-huh. around twenty. I mean, just looking it up now, it'll be like twenty twenty one when he's at twenty six oh. degrees, and then okay. into man, it's going to be hard to give a radio show at that time because I'll be sure. doing twenty 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 twenty. I'll be saying that all the time, but um, yeah, it's oh. it's through like the twenty twenty three. So okay. that's like the peak of it. So we're just heading. It's like we see the hurricane on the horizon as we're navigating the ship. We're not going to get into the hurricane for a few years, but we will be in the hurricane in the early 2020s. So, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's I was major curious. world shift. Yep, it's yeah. coming. So this really kind Wonderful. of is an election of the ending of the old guard. And it really is the new guard will be the next election. There's no doubt about it. The next election's like, nope, we're not putting up with stuff anymore. And they're going to have to change how they politics. So it's really interesting. We'll see. I'll look at it closer as the time gets near, you know, when we're into November. But 
Yep. I think the humanitarian work comes out to what, October, yeah. November? Because I think that's when we're, okay, uh-huh. that's what I kind of yeah. thought. All right. Yeah. Shall I appreciate and you? Will be Sagittarius. Hey, thank you. Uh, good talking to you. Thank you. Likewise. Mm-hmm. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay. That's the end of the show, y'all. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you the day after the Pluto goes direct. So see you next week. Bye. Thanks for stopping by Astro Energy this week. If you would like to get a hold of Shelly Overton, you can get her at astrologerangel.com, on Facebook at Astro Energy or Astrologer Angel. The music was provided by Kevin McLeod at incompetech.com with additional music by Ironwood Rain. Check them out on the net at Ironwood.